First of all, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present data from a subject we have been involved for a long time, which is the bladder function after in utero myeloma meningo cell repair. We have started a robust cohort uh, seeing patients from 2011, just after the onset uh, of the MOMS publication here in Brazil at the Federal University of Sao Paulo, uh, together with Professor Sergio Cavaleiro, neurosurgeon and chairman of neurosurgery at UNIFESP, and Professor Moron. We have been involved in following urologically all these cases. And now, as time went by, we were doing all the investigations here in our team office here, and I personally was involved in assessing these patients, uh, doing urodynamic evaluations from all these patients. And we have a database, which is really uh, interesting. I have patients approaching 12 years of follow-up after in neutral. And this was like a resetting in the knowledge of pediatric urology in myelomeningo cell, because we, from the moment zero, we were able to understand all the evolution of the bladder and the relationship between bladder function uh, in regards to a new procedure, which today is actually the state of the art. So uh, we were uh, publishing many papers. We were able to present and introduce uh, a new classification, which is the Marcela Leal da Cruz categorization pattern in which we have four patterns for bladder function, the high risk, which are those with the bladder has a hyperactivity, overactivity, or a storage or systematic pressure, uh, both events uh, in a higher level than 40 centimeters of water. Those patients are leaking at a low pressure below 40 centimeters of water. Patients with hypochondriactility they have a nice storage, a nice compliance, but they don't have uh, motor activity. They don't contract and don't empty the bladder. And the normal pattern for this population. My job today is to make a preview of what you will be presenting uh, next week in the ESPU meeting, in which we will be presenting uh, patients born 2011, 2013. So, uh, this is the paper we'll be presenting patients seeing what's the fate of the bladder after prospective urological follow-up. Patients born 2011-2013, which we presumably assume they are at current age of 10 to 12 years old. Uh, we know that the two heat hypothesis, uh, it's uh, established the potential advantage of performing surgery intrauteral which means uh, maybe we would prevent the second hit, the, the second hit, which was the exposure of the nerves of the myelomeningo cell to the environment. And this was proved, attested by the MOM study, who showed a uh, potential uh, improvement in terms of better motor status at 30 months and a reduction, a pronounced reduction in the needs of uh, ventricular peritoneal shunt. So in our uh, institution, this was a reality because uh, we have this group here composed by Professor Cavaliero, Professor Moron, Professor uh, Alexandre Lorenzo, who is a pediatric orthopedist, and myself, who are, uh, we, I am a pediatric urologist in this center. And we were able to start, and this was, a precursor in South America, in Latin America, our group. And we have delivered so far several studies. Uh, every time we had uh, an increase in our cohort uh, data, we were uh, presenting uh, data. And it was interesting because we were able to make some opposition to this classic uh, first urological mom's paper which uh, was uh, presented 2015. And at that time, you had already our earlier paper. And we noticed from this categorization uh, protocol 
which uh, was published in the Journal of Virology, in which we have these four categories I mentioned before. One advantage of our settings that have our nurse here, uh, uh, Maria Jose uh, Felizardo, who works with us in our facility. And we had the medical appointment, and right away we performed urodynamics. So, in this paper, uh, yeah, with the first 100 patients, we select patients born 2011, 2013, as you see here. And uh, we were able uh, to, we were expecting to provide uh, assessing just this population, a long-term follow-up of patients uh, with the element in the So uh, this is a prospective cohort neurological outcome. And uh, it's since 2011, after the mom's paper, we used the same protocol, the same recommendations, and we did the first data collection in June 2023, 20, uh, uh, when we prepared the abstract presentation. Uh, at that time, we looked at this uh, population. We exclude patients that just came for the one uh, appointment. We applied. The protocol that includes the categorization, that first appointment and neurodynamics, and we define follow up as the first and last presential appointment. All these patients were seen uh, presentially, or it means live uh, in a, in an appointment here in our facility in our office. So we select forty cases. At a mean follow up of forty nine months. Uh, 6.2 medical appointments per patient, 3.5 uh, urodynamics evaluation, and you see uh, in the first urodynamics there is a preponderance, 62.5% were categorized in the high risk pattern. That's why we, uh, we know that uh, there is a preponderance of the high risk, the 65% were under CIC, uh, and surgery was performed in 15% of cases with this mean follow-up of 49 months. Uh, it's interesting to record response to conservative treatment. Uh, uh, after the fifth and sixth urodynamics, you still have 46% that did not respond to uh, uh, CAC and anticholinergics. So these were the conclusions. But when we look at the database and we look in the follow-up, time, we see patients with uh, 30, 25, 40. So we decide to select patients with a minimum follow-up of 60 months. And then we came from 40 patients to this list, prospective list collected of uh, 15 cases. So uh, this represents 35% of our data but with a mean follow-up of 134 months, to our knowledge, it's the largest uh, follow-up in a prospective study in myeloma and cell. And for sure, for those operated in utero, it's absolutely the largest, uh, an average of almost 10 consultations per patient, five urodynamics, and surgery was done in six of 15 cases. That means 40% four because of high risk pattern, two because of leakage or incontinence. Operation was performed at a mean age of 85 months. We had uh, three cases association with uh, LACE procedure. And uh, from the nine patients, non-operate, three in spite of using CIC and cholinergic are still in the high risk. So they are potential candidates for surgery if they had any complication. We made this uh, Kaplan-Meier survival list with regards to uh, surgical uh, probability, which is very unique and interesting. Uh, and I hope we have with this presentation, uh, give you some uh, answer to this problem. It's an ongoing problem and knowledge is improving uh, consistently. And thank you very much for your attention.